Do you know a woman who hasn't fully realized who she is or found her purpose in life? Does it make you sad to see your daughter or other young people comparing themselves to other women and maybe not matching up in the way they think they should? Have you ever seen a woman downplay her intellect so she doesn't embarrass her boss or her coworkers? If you've ever thought about these things, we're thinking about them too. And in fact, today, that's what we're gonna talk about. Empowering women, it's what we're talking about right now. Welcome to Right Now. I'm your host, Jennifer Shookman, and today I have with me two women who care deeply about women and who are using their talents and gifts to help empower women. Can't wait to introduce them to you. The first, Kristen Jezek. Am I pronouncing it right? Jezek. Jezek, we tried. We, close. Yeah, we, we rehearsed and I it's didn't, didn't get it right. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's whatever okay. sticks in my mind first is what comes out. <laughs> You've been seen on Jimmy Kimmel, a mm -hmm. Grubhub Super Bowl commercial. You've mm -hmm. toured the world through the Youth Day Australia. Yep, World Youth Day. I perform my Mother mm -hmm. Teresa show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, which is incredible. You have a Mother Teresa show mm -hmm. and it features very little of Mother Teresa, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. it's really about the yeah. people that she saw the value in. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is really, really mm -hmm. super neat. And you also have a, um, a web series that you've co-produced, co-wrote, and co-starred in called Ladies Keeping It Real. Mm -hmm. And you can find that on YouTube, right? Yes, you can. Yeah, <laughs> And Mary Catherine Fechtel. Yes, did I you do nailed right? it. Oh, yeah, I think I had that one right before. We so. wanted to make your job hard. Yeah. Yes, we did. <laughs> Anything we can do to empower women, right? Right. <laughs> you are a former Miss Florida, right? You're not currently nope. with the title, but once a Miss Florida, Miss always Florida a Miss Florida. Miss Florida 2015. I mean, if you say so, I'll keep the title. <laughs> <laughs> and the crown, you know, of course. Um, no, I don't want to wear the crown anymore. That yeah. thing hurts. Is it really? <laughs> Can't deal with that. <laughs> Nobody talks about that. <laughs> this gets real. <laughs> Now work in women's empowerment. You also work with anti-human trafficking, which is your was your platform, correct? I do. You were there. Yeah, my platform was human trafficking as Miss Florida, and that dabbled into internet exploitation for oh, young wow. for young people. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, with that, I also gained such a heart for women and women's mm -hmm. empowerment because I was able to see the way that the opportunity had changed my life. Yeah. So now I get to work in both yeah. of those fields, and I'm so grateful. Yeah. Well, I'm sure part of that was from coming from the Miss America that you're now working with women's empowerment. Tell me, like. You know, we all want to know, kind of, don't we? What ah. goes on behind the scenes at Miss America? Like, do you, know, you though? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we. I have, I have, I have seven sisters, so I think there was probably a lot of fighting and borrowing stuff. You know what? I'll yeah. say this: criticism. is there's a lot of different pageants out there, but the Miss America organization is the world's largest scholarship provider mm -hmm. for women in the world. So wow. that attracts a certain kind of woman, uh -huh. and so you have to have talent, you have to have interview. At that point, that I walked into my Miss America interview, I could talk about anything going on politically in the world and I felt like such a boss. <laughs> Don't ask me today. There's too much going on. I'm just kidding. But really it trains you. It really trains you. And so um, the real truth is that there were hard moments, especially with the job of being Miss Florida. Yeah. You're on the road every single day. You are doing everything you can. It's not like you get a paycheck. You get a scholarship. And so to be able to to stand on the backs of the people who make the organization worth it was really special. You got to talk to kids, you got to go to all sorts of fancy events and dress up and get your hair done, um, but it was a lot of work. Yeah. And, and really the experiences that we all receive from the different things that we get to do are what shape us. Mm. And so I am so grateful to have been able to hug all of these people mm. and learn from all of these people who had vastly different experiences than I did, and that was a gift. Yeah, that's great. What are things that you maybe learned, though, going through the Miss America that you now understand when you work with women? Are there some maybe lessons you took away with you? or? One or two. <laughs> so one of the things that I find myself talking about the most is something that even I still struggle with, and that is just the expectation on women to be perfect. Mm. And so when you have a crown on your head, people are expecting you to be flawless. And that was certainly not the case. I would trip down the stairs. I would do everything <laughs> wrong. I was that girl. But I think what helped me and what has really carried me to where I am now is the fact that I learned that lesson. Whereas a lot of people spend their entire lives trying to reach that standard. Now, I competed at Miss America. I actually ended up winning the preliminary fitness award in swimsuit. Okay, it sounds like a great thing until everybody blasts your picture on the internet and you start to get really self-conscious. Oh. And so I started to go, okay, I'm not gonna look at this stuff. Well, somebody 
not meaning any harm, mm -hmm. sent me a photo mm -hmm. from that night. I clicked on it. It ended up taking me to a web page. Mm -hmm. And I had on this entire web page, on the right side of the screen, there were positive comments mm -hmm. about me and my body. And on the left side of the screen, there were negative comments. Now, here's the interesting thing. Oh, wow. You would think that this side of the screen said something different from that side of the screen, but both sides of the screen were basically saying the same thing. So in other words, what was beautiful in one person's eyes was actually not attractive in wow. somebody else's. So this was and like what, crowdsourced? Yes! Oh my it, was, God. it was the internet, right, the internet's crazy. So what, so what we can take away from that is that you're always going to be too much or not enough of something, right? Mm. And people are going to say something positive and negative, they'll be saying the same thing, but you can't please them. You have to keep your eyes ahead. Wow. Wow. That's a great share, story you can share with women and when they're feeling, you know, uncomfortable in their own yeah. swimsuits. I mean, I have to remind myself of it every day. <laughs> uh, Kristen, I'm sure you've probably never been on the internet with <laughs> arrows pointing. But no. As a, as you're an actress, and so you've been in places where you've had your body as your tool. Yeah. Have you yeah. ever had any kind of experience like that? Or? Oh, yes. I mean, oh. it's it's good times. <laughs> Especially when you're first starting. I will never forget, um, you know, when you're first starting, you don't have an agent. So a lot of the times you're going on websites and you're trying to get your own auditions and your own work. And I remember they give you a breakdown, which is basically a little write-up of what they're looking for, you know. And I'd see everything from, oh, we're looking for an average girl. We're looking for the girl next door. We're looking for smoking hot. We're looking for model types. So then I had to sit there behind my little laptop and decide, hmm, am I a model? Am I? My average? Can I submit for this? Am I smoking hot? Yes, yeah, seriously. I mean, on the yes. inside, I feel smoking hot, so they better all get ready. But I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah, well, and that's part of the problem with women, isn't it? Is that we have the exterior comparisons either yeah. other people are making or we're making. And even if we don't have exterior comparisons, we're comparing ourselves internally to something. Why is comparison such a big deal for women? You're asking me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking either of you. At, at I don't the know. end of the day, I mean, I'm a Picasso. You know what I mean? Like, I am, I am who I am. I'm different. I've got my colors. I've got my vibrancy. So really, I shouldn't be comparing. Because, like, if Picasso wasn't Picasso and he's weird, yeah. <laughs> there would never be Picasso. Right. And the yeah. world would be sad. Right. I'm just saying. Right. So <laughs> yeah. in, a, in a larger way, what I hear you saying is we need to accept who we are. Yeah, and embrace and the embrace. different. Yeah. In, in, with yeah. your colors and yeah. your vibrancy. What mm -hmm. I what I've realized recently is that when God created man and woman, he created them good. And what mm. oftentimes the enemy wants to do is he wants to distract us and tell us that we're not good. Mm. But that's the greater lie that God is not good mm. and that what he created is good. Mm -hmm. And so it all ties back together. And if I can look at myself and I can see the way that God created me and see that it was on purpose. He put fingerprints mm. on me, his fingerprints. And so those are for a reason. And the exact intentionality between how much hair I have on my head real or fake, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> between how tall I am, the passions that I have, the mm -hmm. gifts he's given me, the things I can do in this world, all of that was with intention. Mm -hmm. And so if I can look at that and I can actually seize it for its purpose, mm -hmm. abuse is when you use an object for the wrong reason. Yeah. If you don't know what reason something was created, you're gonna abuse it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's so why, it. exactly. Yeah. 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 So that's why it's so important that we figure out why were we made? Who yes. am I? Who yes. is God? Yes. Am I good? Is he good? Because that's where the, the questions begin yes. and that's where we can figure out our purpose and walk forward from yes. there and be pleased with ourselves and be pleased with him. Yes. yes. Yeah. I think that's what you're saying too is when you're fully realized you mm -hmm. don't maybe spend as much time in that comparison. No, no. And at the end of the day, I, I mean, the world would be at a loss yeah. if you were not you. Yeah. You know, when yeah. you think of all of these different people, the different colors of society, and it's just so difficult because it's society itself that decides that this person is this type right. or that this is this. Yeah. You know, why should there have to be a description of average? Why should I have <laughs> even had to think about myself? Am I average? Yeah. Am I hot? You know what I mean? Like it really, it's all hot. 
I mean, at the end of the day, it's all hot, and it's human beings have decided this is not. And it changes throughout the centuries. What was attractive at one point in humankind is no longer attractive, and next century it might not be. Who knows? We decide that, but we also get to speak into it. And it's our our responsibility not to just accept it, but when we hear the opposite of what we know is true and what we know is beautiful, to be able to speak into it and resist. I think that was my problem. I was just born in the wrong century. Paul (laughs) Rubenesque had a lot of beautiful women that I would fit in much (laughs) more closely with with many of today's women. I I think this is great that we can talk about this because we're women who are all doing things. We're, you know, trying to become fully realized women. But there's a lot of millennials out there who maybe haven't quite figured it out. A lot of girls in junior high who don't want to be different, who want to be exactly the same. I want to ask you, you know, some thoughts on that. And we're going to find out more about that after we come back from this message. So stay tuned. We'll find out a little bit more about what happens when girls want to be the same. Welcome back. I'm here with Kristen Jazak. Did I get it right this time? You did. Yay! <laughs> And Mary Catherine Fechtel, and we're talking about empowering women, and we just talked about the fact that women really need to fully become themselves and really own who they are and who who they are in God's creation, but what about a junior high girl? She does not want to be different and fully who she is. She wants to be just like the popular girl. Mm. What kinds of advice would you give a young woman who's just trying to discover herself? Well, this is why this topic is so important to me, is because I was actually a product of school bullying, Mm -hmm. and I was picked on from um, kindergarten all the way through seventh grade it was a really long time to be bullied Mm -hmm. and a really hard thing to go through and it took me a long time and like thank God um, you know God gave me an opportunity where I was healed you know and I could come into myself and step into myself but no young girl should have to deal with those kinds of pressures yeah. and feeling that way. Yeah. I'm not good enough. You know, yeah. I mean, it just, it's just sad. And, and yeah. like, don't even start about dating. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like school dances, like forget that, you know, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. You sometimes feel like girls doing things they do just because they want to be heard and noticed. Yes. You think that's part of, you know? Well, I think it's this culture that says, look at me, right? It's the selfie culture that we live in. Yeah. So the reason that those young girls are going on the internet and are looking at what other people look like is because we all have this paradigm of what we think we want to be. But the reason that even exists is because we have those images and we're the ones who feed ourselves right. Right. that yeah. comparison that breeds yeah. depression, right? Yeah. And so what happens happens is young women then have to figure out alongside of the actual image of who they are, who they are on the inside, and who they're going to be in society. And oftentimes there's this need to to develop this appreciation of their feminism and also their um, power and their intellect and they're figuring out how do I do both and how do I go rule the world and be a CEO Mm -hmm. and be a girl boss but also be still be a woman and care about raising a family how do I do all of this how do I have it all Mm -hmm. and at the end of the day life is full of trade-outs but young millennial women are faced with so many different messages Mm -hmm. and that's what's so Mm -hmm. difficult is they get online and everybody wants to be heard and you see this Facebook article and you read this article that your friend wrote Mm -hmm. and you're going what do I even listen to Mm -hmm. and so if you look at scripture it's interesting Jesus was asked 183 questions in the New Testament out of those he only answered three of them so the message that I get from that is you know the world can be screaming and we can be being asked all of these things the world can require all this different stuff from us to look a certain way to be a certain way at the end of the day what god says and who he created you to be is what matters but at the end of the day he's the one we answer to and jesus was shrewd in who he gave answers to Mm -hmm. and so we're able to step into culture we're able to talk to young women Mm -hmm. and actually give them the meaningful answers and not just be another loud voice Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the thing is, it's just so hard because we're talking about the reality, Mm -hmm. you know, and this labeling that society puts on, and there is 
truth. Yeah. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. there is truth. And that was part of the problem. I mean, what we hear, what people tell us, they're lies, you know, mm -hmm. that we accept yeah. about ourselves and we decide that that's what we're going to walk yeah. around as. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to clothe myself in this and yeah. this is who I'm going to become and I'm going to accept this. But the truth of the matter what is, and that was part of my own healing, was coming to that realization that I didn't have to live with that lie. Mm -hmm. Totally. You know, that I wasn't just the funny girl, I was the pretty girl. Yep. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 What we feed ourselves is so important. I found that young women and, and even older women oftentimes are good at giving advice and truth to other people. So we're able to give people grace and to remind them that they're beautiful. But do we speak that over ourselves? Yeah. Sometimes yes. the messages yes. that we speak over ourselves yeah. dictate our entire days, our entire lives. Yeah. And so to have that self-talk, to have prayer time with the Lord, yes. to be able to talk to yourself the yes. truth that you know to be true, but you don't speak over yourself. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. And so if we're able to use that and assert that in our own lives, we're also able to influence others with that yes I think you know we talk about the the younger folks doing the selfies and you know they're basically curating a picture of themselves online and and part of this experimentation they really are trying to figure out who am I am I the smart girl am I the nerdy girl am I the cute girl in the bathing suit you know they're they're doing that but as women we continue that and then we start to look at other people and we're not only comparing maybe at that point we've grown out of comparing ourselves in swimsuits to someone else but we're comparing the vacations they took or the cars oh, they yeah, drive or the yeah. promotion they got and and so that kind of thing continues on what do you say to a woman who maybe feels like, oh, no, I figured this out. And you're like, no, you're still, you know, not feeling your worth because you're comparing maybe now material things instead of your physical body. Don't miss the joys in your own life. Oh, that's great. That's advice. what I would say. Don't miss the joys. Be, and part of that is, and I think this is a good thing for all of us to learn and know, even when the big things happen, I mean, yes, they're exciting, but don't miss even the little mm -hmm. joys. Don't miss the opportunity. Like... The other day I had an audition and this this was so crazy, but there was this young girl who was in the audition room with me and she's like, I have a compliment for you. I want to tell you something. And I was like, oh gosh, like where are we going? Like this is going to be bad. And she's like, I love your nose. And I was like, I was not expecting that. And she had a very prominent nose herself, but it was just like, it was a little joy. You know what I mean? The fact that she felt that she wanted to say that, you know, and to encourage me, or even like when somebody gives you a nice new purse, you know what I mean? A friend thinks of you and gives you a little gift. Like don't miss the little joys yeah. in your own life. Yeah. yeah. There, I was walking down um, Melrose Avenue um, in the beginning of February. It wasn't even close. It was maybe the end of January. It wasn't even close to Valentine's Day, you know, as you would think. And there was a little old lady wearing like a red and purple hat with a big bow and red coat and pink pants and boots and silver. And that, like she was just amazing looking. And I just said, can I please take your picture? Mm -hmm. And she posed and she said, how many bags do you want me to hold? Do you oh. want it from the side? <laughs> yes. And I thought, I want to be like you. Yes. And I, you know, I mean, like how yeah. amazing is that? Yeah. I thought I was thought maybe she'd be offended that I asked to take her picture. No, she was totally into it. And, and I just thought that was great. Like we should all be like that and too often if we're not. One of the things that I worry about now and, and something I've just come upon lately because um, it's been a long time since I've been in school, but it's the hookup culture mm -hmm. where um, young people are getting together. And by young, it can be uh, middle school all the way up into young adults um, uh, into their 30s even, um, where they get together sexually just because um, they're present, they're there. It's an easy thing. And in some cases, they do it because it's convenient. They don't really have time to date or they don't really have time to have a relationship. So instead, mm -hmm. there's this hookup culture going on. I'm worried about what that looks like for the future of women. Is that something either of you have given much thought to? Yeah, I mean, I date, so. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a trip. <laughs> but <laughs> seriously, no, but you know what? To that, I want to say, and I want to say this especially for any women who are watching out there, it is worth the weight. Mm -hmm. It is better to be single than to give in to any man's whim because I mean this this man that you're going to be with, you want them to be your forever, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just it's worth the wait. And I know it's hard and I know it's a struggle cuz I'm waiting too. So I'm just <laughs> telling the sisters out there to wait. <laughs> Gird your loins, ladies. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I think particularly for younger women, 
there's the tendency to find identity and how and much a man yeah. or yeah. a boy, yeah. boy, let's be clear, if they're <laughs> under the age of, let's say 20. <laughs> <laughs> well, the male brain doesn't fully develop until 27. No, so. I was trying to be gentle. <laughs> that's, that's science. I'm not, it's that's science. Not what can we say? <laughs> um, but there's just such this tendency to want to be attractive and to see how attractive mm. you are and to see how far they want to yeah. go. Yeah. And so totally. if we can actually instill what we were talking about earlier yeah. I think that it'll be a lot less of an issue it'll still be an issue yeah. there's other elements that play in but I think that identity is something that we overlook when it comes to the mm. hookup culture because we're trying to find our identity yeah. in that in being loved when there's really only one true love that yes. can fill that hole yeah the uh, we were um, had a woman on a previous show um, that talked about the fact that all sexuality is really a need for intimacy mm -hmm. and what we're really looking for in sexuality is to be known and to know others and that's what spirituality is but we're looking for it with other humans and so when we misuse and abuse what we talked about earlier we end up with you know things like the hookup culture which isn't going to help us really be known and be known it's actually going to do the opposite of that yeah, because right. we're going to be used and thrown right. away or, or whatever um, any further thoughts on any of that? Before? Just, just that you know, you're a precious treasure. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, a precious treasure needs to be put on a shelf and adored and and looked at as lovely. And if anyone's not treating you that way, they're not worth it. <laughs> yeah. It's easy for her to say. What would you tell a woman who doesn't feel that way yet? Yeah, I mean, there have definitely been times that I haven't felt that way, mm -hmm. and God has graced me with the ability to resist, and and so. Um, and to not give in to just dating the scumbags that I felt yeah. like I wanted to date yes. just to feel something mm -hmm. almost went there and I didn't mm -hmm. but I think that I've also seen respect happen and I've mm -hmm. seen pictures of what it looks like for a man and a woman to be in a committed relationship mm -hmm. yeah and so because of that I actually see the picture of what God did for us and our relationship with him in that mm -hmm. and I, I'm able to see the beauty of what it looks like and what it feels like when something's right. And so the, the ability to trust God and wait for that is where the tough part comes in, but it goes back to speaking truth, holding on to the promises that he gave us. He's for us, he's not against us. Yeah. And so we don't have anything to be afraid of if we're walking forward yeah. in that. Yeah, and I mean, um, you know, you look at St. Paul and he talks about temporary pain. It's worth the temporary pain. We are a society that doesn't want to suffer. We don't want <laughs> to true. go through what it takes to get to the other side, but the reality is it's always worth it. Like, we all know this. Yeah. <laughs> it is always worth the wait. Yeah. You ladies are full of truth and wisdom. What would you say to a woman who feels like it's necessary to hide her intellect or her mm. wisdom? Do it afraid. That's one thing that my <laughs> boss always tells me is... You can do things, it's just a matter of are you gonna do it or not? Mm -hmm. And if you feel afraid, that doesn't mean you're not supposed to. One of my most respected teachers, preachers, was getting on stage one time, and I heard her in this big arena, there was 7,000 women there. And I was so excited to hear her talk, and I thought, wow, what a rock star, she's mm -hmm. getting up there. And she said, guys, I have to be honest with you. I was just over there backstage in that corner asking for God to bind my anxiety, bind my anxiety, mm -hmm. bind my anxiety. And I thought, you have done this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. You've got up on stages like this. You're just doing, again, people love you. You know what you're doing and you're still able to admit that you're afraid. That means you know you're human. Mm -hmm. And that means you know where your strength mm -hmm. comes from. And so the fact that that woman could say that she was afraid, makes me go, well, what am I not doing? Because I'm afraid that I was actually made to do, and I'm holding back on the world, offering my gifts, my talents, on my potential, by just not doing it afraid. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great advice. I'm gonna ask you for one more piece of advice, though. I want you both, when we come back from this break, so you have a little bit to think about it, what is the best piece of advice that you would give a woman if she were sitting across from you and saying, I don't know what to do? What's that one piece of advice that you would give her that would help her to, mm -hmm. to do what she needed to do? And I know you want to hear that advice because I do too. So stay tuned after this break and we'll come back and we'll hear the best advice. Welcome back. We've been talking about empowering women and getting rid of the comparison. There's no win in comparison. I know it's cheesy, but you'll remember it. And so I want to ask you guys for one final piece of advice. If a woman were sitting across from you and said, I just don't know, what would you tell her? 
take time to do things that really build you up. Um, I think part of the reason why I had the healing that I did was because of retreats and books that I read, and especially retreat experiences. I mean, there is nothing beyond that. Having an actual encounter with God and with the truth of who you are and surrounding yourself by women who are going to build you up, who are on the same path and are like-minded. I think that's really important. That's great. Yeah, I think we've talked a lot about going and doing, doing stuff afraid, going and living out your purpose, but the truth is, and this is a truth that I'm daily having to wrestle with and remind myself of, is that God actually created us with one-seventh of our time supposed to be rest. It's called Sabbath. And he actually commanded us to do that because he knows that's how we operate, mm-hmm. right? So we go to bed at night, we have we have this dependency where we have to sleep, mm-hmm. we have to eat food. This is just how we were made. And we're not gonna operate well if we don't respect the way that we were made. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so giving myself time to run full force, mm-hmm. but also giving myself time to say, all right, I need this Sabbath time, I need this rest time. When sometimes my nature says, no, 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 my pride yeah. says, you can do it, yeah. you don't need to rest, you can keep going, you can keep going and then I crash and burn and fail yeah. and I say wow I really should have taken that time to rest invest in yourself yeah. just like yeah. you were yeah. saying yeah. and yeah. Take, yeah. The take the time, the time to take rest and heal. That's how we and heal yeah. you know yes. admit to yourself admit to yourself I don't feel this way I don't think this way and and find the healing that you need you know like I said go on a retreat um, Unbound was a great book for me captivating was a great mm-hmm. book really healing books mm-hmm. that I I encountered that really changed my life yeah. I, I, we are out of time, but this has been such great advice, but I'm just going to have to ask you to do one last thing as we roll on out of here. And that's, can you dance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been we asking so wanted to dance. for the last yes. hour. That was my whole reason for <laughs> coming, was to dance. <laughs> We hope you've taken home some nuggets that you can use in your life or a woman that you care about. This just isn't for women for themselves. It's also for your daughters. It's for your uh, wife, your spouse, your sisters. You know somebody who can benefit from just the words of wisdom these ladies have shared with us today. Thanks so much for being a part of Right Now, and we'll see you back here next time. Okay, we can dance now. Dancing.